change our heart as we stand on your word. Holy Spirit, rain down. Oh, let's see you now. Holy Spirit, rain down. Rain down. Oh, comforter and friend, how we need your touch again. right. How many of you need a good raining on tonight? How many of you welcome the Holy Spirit to have His way in this service here tonight? Why don't you give the Lord a big hand clap of praise? You love Him with all your heart tonight. Praise the Lord. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say praise the Lord. Well, isn't God good tonight? Why don't you take a second, turn around, shake somebody's hand. Tell them you're glad to see them in the house of the Lord tonight. What a privilege it is to be in church once again. Holy Spirit, rain down. Rain down. Oh, comforter. God bless you. Good to see you, buddy. just exactly what we're expecting from this service tonight. I come expecting great things because I believe the Lord is going to speak to us tonight from His Word. It's almost like camp meeting every service, and I'm glad it's that way to me. I'm glad it's not just another humdrum church service. Aren't you glad God still talks? Aren't you glad God still speaks? Aren't you glad there's still a move of the Holy Ghost? Oh, somebody say hallelujah! Hallelujah! Oh, praise the Lord. Let's look at our prayer request tonight. Brother Tim Cross is here with us tonight, visiting from South Carolina. Brother Tim, God bless you. We're a wonderful minister of the gospel, loves this message with all of his heart. He's going to come just in a minute, take us to the Lord in prayer on behalf of our request tonight. I want to pray for Sister Clara Davis. She has the flu, and we just might say there's quite a few folks that has the flu and an old virus bug going around, but we just pray for him tonight that God would would heal all those that are suffering from the flu and flu symptoms. I want to pray for Sister Martha Johnson, sick and unable to be in the service tonight. Prayer request for Brother Philip Elliott, 
who is seeking a job, let's just pray that the Lord would make that need. Uh, I believe we can feel that need tonight, don't you? We just pray that the Lord would help our brother. Sister Jan Winters, uh, unable to be in this service tonight, sick, needs a touch from the Lord. Brother Jerry Glenn says, please pray for Brother Ben Norod. He has a, a severe stomach virus, so we just pray for Brother Ben tonight, that the Lord would touch our brother. Brother Eddie Yance is in the hospital with pneumonia. Really, really bad condition. And he's asking that we would, Brother Jack turns his prayer request in on his behalf. So we certainly want to pray for Brother Eddie Yance that the Lord would, would touch our brother and just heal his body. Also have a prayer request for Brother, brother Tracy. He's in room 112 at the, uh, what used to be, I guess, the old Northside Hospital. It's the Quill and Rehab Center. And he's in room 112 and invites visitors all shapes and sizes. He said, you're welcome to come and visit with him. So remember that, if you will. I want to pray for Blair, uh, Sister Blair, actually for Blair Deskins. She's in the hospital in the intensive care. Request prayer, Sister Linda Short sends that in. Jerry and Brenda Thompson offers this testimony, announcement, and, and, and they, they want to thank the Lord for bringing our son-in-law, Josh Perlinger, home safely from Afghanistan. They want to praise the Lord for that. So that's, that's wonderful, a, a wonderful testimony tonight. Brother Scott Hickson says that his step-grandfather fell and broke his hip today in a lot of pain. So we certainly want to pray for that need. If you have an unspoken prayer request tonight, something you'd like for this assembly to pray about. And I know all of you have heard and the news and read in the newspaper about the tragedy in, in Connecticut yesterday. We certainly want to take those those families, that community, that town on our heart, that the Lord would just be with them during this very, very difficult time. We're living in a very, very difficult, perilous times, dangerous times. But I'm so glad our hope is not in this world, not in our finances, not in our politics, not in all of our policies, but our, our hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Greatest place it could be is in the Lord Jesus Brother Tim, God bless you tonight. Let's join our brother. Give him a nice hand tonight as he comes. Brother Tim Cross. God bless you, brother. Say a word if you'd like to. Say a word if you'd like to. Sure. I greet you in the lovely name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, last Saturday morning, I stood by the bedside of a saint um, who was just about ready to cross over. He had a real rough night with pneumonia. And um, we just felt the presence of the Lord there in the room. And I said, Brother Jay, I said, what's, your, what's the greatest desire of your heart? I said, as, a, as our Heavenly Father, I don't believe there's anything we as his children could desire that he wouldn't grant to us. And he said, Brother Tim, he said, I just want to go home. And I knew his son was there, his wife we knew which home he was talking about and I said well you know you're ready if the Lord would take you home it's, you know it would break our heart but at the same time we know you got a better body waiting and I turned to his son I said brother Scott what do you think he said well brother Tim he said when dad's tired he's tired of fighting he's weary he hasn't rested he's just just out of strength he said he's ready to go to that home. He said, but yesterday he was sitting up in bed and he was laughing and the different ones were there. And he said he was talking about going home and fixing the gutters. So he wanted to go to that home. And I thought about Enoch, you know, it's just right there. We're all going home tonight. Amen. We had prayer with them. He said, just Lord, he said, just whatever the Lord's will is, Brother Tim, that's all we're asking for. We had prayer together. Tuesday, Brother Scott called me. He said, Dad's home today. He went back to his earthly home. He's, uh, God's got, got him here for a few more days, a few more months, a few more years. We don't know, but brother and sister, we're living in the hour, of the going home of the bride of Jesus Christ. I pray in this service tonight, the Lord will give us all a glimpse of home, amen. Whatever your need is tonight, I believe the Lord is present to minister that need. Let's go to him in prayer. Lord Jesus, 
Father, it's always a, a blessing, Lord, when we can come together with saints of like precious faith. And Father, to, to know what we're gathering around tonight. Lord, it's not something dead. It's not a creed. It's not a, a, a tradition, Lord. It's not a dogma, but it's the fresh meat of the revealed word of the hour. Lord, you have supplied your children, your little eaglets in this hour with fresh eagle food. Lord, that's what brings us here this evening. And Father, I, I believe in this building tonight, Lord, with, with a, a group of this size, Lord. No doubt there's some, Lord, in the lowest valley. Lord, no doubt there's some of us, Father, on the mountain tonight and having revival in our lives. And many, Lord, are somewhere in between. But Father, we pray as we gather here this evening, Lord, that uh, anything, Lord, that the enemy would try to uh, use against us to hinder or to pull us down or distract us, Lord, I pray that we'll just be lifted up tonight into a heavenly atmosphere, Lord, where all of those things could drop away, Lord, where your children could lift their hands and say, you are my father, you are my God, you are my creator, you are my groom, you are my soon coming king. And Lord, such an atmosphere would be created here that, Lord, we could just catch up, Lord, into heavenly places and see, Father God, we're almost home. Oh God, may you grant it tonight for each of these requests that have been written here. And Lord, for the unspoken needs on the hearts of your children. Lord, may we, as we hear the word and as we worship you this evening, Father God, may faith be quickened in our hearts to reach out, Lord God, and lay hold of your promise and say we deny the circumstances, we deny the symptoms, we deny every lying vanity, and we stand upon the promised word of God and say, God, be it unto me according to thy word. Grant it this evening, Lord, may such an atmosphere be created here that miracles could take place. Lord, that a sinner would drop to his knees and repent, Father God, and receive you as his Savior, dear Lord. Father God, just have your perfect will and way in this service tonight. That's all we ask and all we desire. We thank you for it and ask you to grant it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brother Tim, God bless you. Amen. Ushers, if you'll come at this time. We'll receive the evening offering. If you're a visitor here tonight, we certainly want to welcome you to the service. Glad to have you. All those that are streaming the service tonight from around the world, our brothers and sisters, may God richly bless, bless those folks as well. Let me make this announcement. We'll sing a song tonight. The children's quis- Christmas choir rehearsal will be tomorrow after service. Please bring a lunch. Pick up at 3 p.m. sharp. Sister Ivy Blair wants all the children that's going to be in the Christmas choir. You'll have rehearsal tomorrow after service. Your parents need to pick you up at 3 o'clock and bring a lunch. So remember that. Let's sing a little chorus. We're going home, aren't we? Praise the Lord. Yes, we're going home. I'm going home. There is nothing to hold. Me here since I caught a glimpse of that heavenly land. Praise God, I'm going home. Sing it now with all your heart. Oh, yes, we're going. To hold me here Since I, I've caught a glimpse Of that heavenly land Oh, praise God I'm going home Can you see it one more time? We're going home Oh, I'm going home There is nothing to hold me here Since I, I've caught a glimpse Oh, 
Amen. We're going home. Let's sing a song tonight just before we change the order of the service. He looked beyond my fault and he saw my need. Aren't you glad that he saw your need? Aren't you glad he done something about it tonight? I shall forever lift my eyes to count. you tonight. I'm going to let you be seated. Uh, I want to make an announcement to you tonight. Sister Anna and Sister Cinda and friends, they recorded a new CD. And I meant to make mention of this Wednesday night, and I didn't have one of these up here to remind me. And uh, I forgot to do that. But uh, I got one and took it home and played it, and it's, it's a tremendous, tremendous CD. Larry Elliott and some of the brothers, I think, uh, I don't know exactly, I'll get in trouble if I start naming names, but they put this together and it's just a tremendous, tremendous CD by Christian people that I've got a lot of confidence in. And we're going to let you hear one of their songs tonight off of this, off of this CD. I believe Brother, uh, Brother Robert's song number three, and I want you to listen to this and see what you think about it, but I believe it'll be a I believe it'd be a great blessing in your home if you had one of these. I'm not trying to sell them. Nobody asked me to, to promote these, but I just want to let you know that uh, it's I'm picky when it comes to to singers. But this, I, I highly recommend this. This is a good CD. I believe it'd be a blessing to you, brother Rob. God bless you. As you play that for us tonight. <laughs>
to wane When I cried my last tear and felt crushed by the pain In his sweet tender way he's been there He's so faithful When my friends have gone on and I'm still left with grief When I'm weak and I'm shaken like an insecure leaf That sounded pretty good, didn't it? Uh, I tell you what, they keep practicing. They may be able to make another CD one of these days. Let's stand it tonight, if you will. It's time we're going into the service. I know you're looking forward to the preaching of the Word of the Lord tonight. And just the thought that Brother Donnie has started on thoughts, uh, just uh, it's just amazing what we're getting out of this. It's camp meeting time, church. Somebody say praise the Lord. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Give him another big hand clap of praise. Give me kid G. Yes, I know my Redeemer lives. Yes, I know my Redeemer lives. Let all creation testify. Let this life within me cry that I know my Redeemer lives. Yes, I know my Redeemer lives. Yes, I know my Redeemer lives. Let all creation testify. Let this life within me cry that I know my Redeemer lives. Redeemer lives. Let all creation testify. Let this life within me cry that I know my Redeemer lives. Sing it again. Oh, I know my Redeemer lives. I know my Redeemer lives. Testify, and I know my Redeemer lives. Praise the Lord. I'm so glad He's my Redeemer. Aren't you glad He's yours? Personally. Let's turn to Philippians chapter 4 tonight, if you would. I'd like to speak to you again tonight on the power of thought. 
Philippians chapter 4. We'll begin reading verse 4 down through verses 8. Rejoice in the Lord. Really? Strange. Does that mean sick, well, money, no money, in, out, up, down, all the way? Hmm. And then he says, and again I say, rejoice. So in case y'all missed it the first time, he got it for you the second time. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds, hearts and minds, through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, Whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Let's pray together if you would. Lord Jesus, we thank you tonight for the reading of your word. We ask now, Father, that you would take these things that lay before us, make it real to us, Lord God. May we not just hear, but may we be transformed by what we hear, by the renewing of our minds. We know you made a a great, incredible creation when you made man. Even in his fallen condition, he's still an absolutely overwhelming being. I pray, Father, that you would help us to realize and understand much of what we go through Much of what we deal with is self-inflicted because of the thought world that we live in. Speak to us tonight, Lord Jesus, and make it real, I pray. Amen. God bless you, saints. You may be seated. Brother Michael uh, told me before the service that some of the quotes and some of the things that I had here that I wanted to share with you tonight that's having a little trouble with part of them, so... You may say them and you may not, but some of them are so real and so wonderful that I wanted to share them with you. And even if they're not able to have them on the screen, they will be on the website because I think it'll be really beneficial for you to be able to read and to be able to see some of these things that are truths, not just truths in the sense of scientifically, they're not just proved in laboratories but proved by the Word of God. Now, whenever we think of our thoughts and our words, and we know that Satan always has a scarecrow in front of the real things that God is going to do. For many, many years, there's been things around the power of positive thinking and uh, Christian science and mind over matter and all that sort of thing. But we know that scarecrows are to scare crows and not to scare eagles. So as an eagle of God, scarecrows shouldn't scare us. But whenever we look at the truth of the word and to see how profound that it actually is, yet revealed in such simplicity, sometimes it can be almost too simple for us to believe that it could be that powerful because of the way we identify power. And we think that power and the releasing of divine energy and supernatural force has to be always so complex and so complicated. But really when we look at it in the beginning, when God went to bringing this earth into the use of his purpose, it was very, very simple. When God got ready to start using it, he just simply spoke. And he believed his word, and then things began to happen upon the face of the earth that began to be transformed to match what God had thought in his mind. Now, I'm sure that most of you have, have read the newspaper, heard the radio, and read your internet and all that, of the terrible thing that happened yesterday of the young man who killed these innocent children and all these people. Now, you, you know already, without me telling you, that that actually began in his mind. 
Now, it started out somewhere as a thought. Was it resentment of something? Uh, was he, did he have some sort of neurological problem? Did he have uh, some type of complexity that laid in the subconscious? Who knows exactly where it started, but it could have only started in his mind, and then he began to act out what those thoughts were. Now, hopefully, by the grace of God, you and I never act out such crazy, bizarre things as that. But yet, every day of our lives, we are acting, living, saying, suggesting, and believing, and persuading others by the power of the thoughts that we have in our own life. Now, I know that many times we look at things, really, are our words are our words that important? Our thoughts, are they that important? Does it really matter if you talk certain ways or don't talk in certain ways? Does it really matter? Does it affect the outcome of your life? And the way you think, does it affect the way you are? Does it have any correlation at all with your mind? Is there any connection in your soul, in your spirit, in your body, in the way you think? Is there any at all? Or can you just talk any way basically you want to? Can you live in a negative world and it not affect you or is there something that God himself placed there knowing that it would be a great powerful force most of you know that he did let us read some scriptures tonight if you want let's start out this foundation in Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 12 the words of a wise man's mouth are gracious but the lips of a fool will swallow up himself The words of a wise man's mouth. Now remember, words are an expression of thoughts. So the words of a wise man's mouth are gracious. But the lips of a fool will swallow up himself. So the fool's thoughts will create his own destiny. The wise man's thoughts will create before him and create gracious paths of life for him to tread upon. Notice again in Proverbs twelve eighteen, There is that speaketh like the piercings of a sword. But the tongue of the wise is health. What in the world is what I've got to say got to do with my health? Praise the Lord. There is that speaketh like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise is health. Now remember, your tongue cannot operate separate from your thought pattern. They must operate in the same channel. Now if you are talking from the Word of God, now remember, not mind over matter, but actually God anointing your thoughts, and your thoughts are in the pattern of the Word, then what does it do? It creates a world. For you to live in. It's actually your atmosphere. Now watch this in Proverbs chapter 15 verse 2. The tongue of the wise useth knowledge aright. But the mouth of fools pours out foolishness. Proverbs 18 7. A fool's mouth is his destruction. And his lips are the snare of his soul. You mean it's not just all the time adultery and pornography and drinking and alcohol and oh that's what it'll lead to. That's what it will lead him to. But it doesn't begin out there. It will begin from within himself. Notice this, Proverbs eighteen twenty. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. With the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Proverbs eighteen twenty one. Death Death and life. Can it be? (coughs) Can this be true? It is true. (coughs) Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Goodness gracious. You mean that has power. Death and life, (coughs) excuse me, are in the power of the tongue, 
And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Now remember, a word is a thought expressed. So if death is in the power of my tongue, or life is in the power of my tongue, then it must come from a source within me which allows my tongue to express what that inevitable source is. So I can walk in the power of life or the power of death. Through what? My tongue. Mm. Notice Jesus says it this way in Matthew 12, 33. Either make the tree good and his fruit good or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit. O generation of vipers, how can ye being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things. And an evil man of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. Now look at this word idle. It may not mean exactly what you're thinking. Slow, barren, free from labor, at leisure, lazy, shunning the labor which one ought to perform. Now do you understand? It is much easier to say negative, down, discouraging, all kinds of things. It's because they require no labor for a human being under the curse. They come so much easier. Well, it always happens to me. That's my luck. There is no such a thing as luck. Luck is not in the Bible. Luck is not a divine ordinance of God. It is just something that man has made. Well, my family's always been this way, and your mouth is going to take you that way too. But you don't have to go that way. You can alter that way. It's up to you because death and life is in the power of the tongue. Now, remember now, look at what Jesus said, every idle word. So it literally means a vain, thoughtless, useless word that accomplishes no good. So it's not that we're just going to give an account for those things which are, you know, really well, I don't know, it's just you know, we think foolishness and telling jokes. Uh-uh. No, no, friend. It's not telling jokes. You realize that many negative things that we say, are much more detrimental to our walk with God than telling jokes. Just making people laugh and all that sort of thing. A merry heart does good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. But it's those idle words which are not laboriously brought forth from a real regenerate soul which ties itself into the principles of God and says what God says about itself. True. Glory. Verse 37, for by thy words shalt thou be justified, and by thy words shalt thou be condemned. So there is power expressed through thoughts when they are spoken. Now, notice this. According to experts, negativity actually impedes impulses from being transmitted between the central nervous system And the brain. Now watch how you're made. And you'll see hopefully. The power that lays between your brain and your physical response to the way God made you. Now watch this. Negativity actually impedes impulses from being transmitted between the central nervous system and the brain. Because the brain cannot interpret those impulses correctly. You know you were not made to live in negativity. We don't function right when we're negative all the time. We don't function right. We don't think right. Our spirit ain't right. We're just not right when we're down and depressed. You know how you wasn't made to be that way? Oh, even after the fall, even after the fall. If I was made to operate best under depression, then when I get down, I ought to be at my best. But I'm not. And neither are you. Y'all going to say amen? You're going to look at me. Now watch this. Memory is affected. Sleep disturbances are experienced. Emotional upsets become the order of the day. 
immune function can also be affected, resulting in susceptibility to colds and flu just from negative thinking. Now, this ain't from some nut website. These are doctors from Mayo Clinic from all kinds of uh, things where they've done study after study, search after search. We really don't even need their studies. The word tells us itself. But I thought, you know what? I'm so going to, by the help of the Lord, tear the hide off that devil. I want these folks to see exactly why they ought to talk that word and why their confession ought to be positive in the word so they can experience it for themselves. Negativity can also be the result of constantly trying to fit more into an overcrowded schedule. And I realize that probably don't affect but three or four people here in our church because everybody here has got so much time to do anything and everything you want to do. Listen to this. Negativity can also result of constantly trying to fit more into an overcrowded schedule. If there was any generation and age of people that needed 37 hours in a day, it's us. If there was anybody that needed 12 days in one week, 137 days in every month, it's us. Or so we think. Because we never have enough time to get everything done that we think we just have to do. We've got to attend 45 soccer ball games a year. We've got to go to 45 baseball games. We've got to go to this one's birthday and that one's birthday and this one's birthday and this Tupperware party and this party and that party and another party. Because if you don't go, they'll get mad at you because they come to yours. So with our overcrowded schedule, what does it produce? More and more and more and more negativity in our lives. Study shows that those who lead a competitive, stressful lifestyle or who strive for perfection often have higher levels of a harmful amino acid and a damaging protein in their blood, which can cause inflammation in the arteries and heart problems. And of course, when we get these said symptoms, we'll blame God for it. Well, here I am, I'm a Christian, and I've got this damaging amino acid, and I've got this hormone, and I've got this psychological something. God, why don't you heal me? And God said, why don't you quit worrying? Why don't you quit trying to schedule so much in your life and rest some? Well, glory. (laughs) Listen to this. The Mayo Clinic reports that people who focus on positives instead of the negatives experience many health benefits. They live longer lives. So if people just in the natural focus on positive things, make them live longer lives, no wonder if I can think the real thoughts, I'll never die. (laughs) Glory. Oh, man. Notice, Notice what it does now. Gives them longer lives, have lower rates of mental illnesses, such as depression, are less likely to suffer from the common cold and cardiovascular disease and have better coping skills to deal with stress. Wow, that within itself is enough to strive for, ain't it? Just to be able to deal with stress. So me thinking, now look for him. This is not preachers that said this. This is not prophets, but it's simply what they are finding out. Brother Brown said many of these statements I'm going to read to you back in the 50s. And they're just finding out what that prophet of God said years and years ago.
Notice this. I like this part. Researchers aren't sure why positive thinking can improve a person's overall health. They see it. They see the effects. And they see what's going on. But they can't figure out why. Now, let's look at how negative thinking affects your health. Negative thinking causes headaches, body aches, a host of health-related conditions which might not normally incur. Any of y'all ever get to talking about some bad situation in your family or some bad situation in the church or some bad situation in the world or whatever, and you just keep on your husband or wife or you just keep on going and going, talking about it and talking about it. You approach it from this way and then that way and that way and that way. And finally, whenever you get it all talked through, you didn't really change anything, but you just got it all talked through. And when you got it all talked through afterwards, you feel so down yourself. And you actually go to feel a little bit sick. It's like, what in the world is the matter with me? Your words so reacted in your body that your body started releasing things inside of your own body. Maybe it wasn't even your situation. Somebody that you love, somebody that you're concerned about. But are we not supposed to talk about it? Sure we are. But there's a place we got to stop. There's a place, friends, we've got to stop and commit it to God or we become sick ourselves. Woo. Watch this. Depression is the main culprit caused by feelings of inadequacy, low self-esteem, fear, and anxiety. These feelings are generally result in heart attacks, strokes, and an overall feeling of hopelessness. And that comes from what? Bad, negative thoughts? Now, this is not a side effect of some medicine. This is not a side effect of something that you took. It's a side effect of allowing those thoughts to become so a part of your being. that They begin to release these things in your body. And you're making yourself sick. In addition, negative thinking creates stress. And stress is the number one cause of major health problems today. While it's not easy to stay positive in a world filled with hate and violence, the idea is to focus on you and your family and what you can control, not what is totally out of your control. How many of y'all worried this morning when you got up about trying to figure out how the sun was going to come up? Any of y'all? Any of y'all worried about how the moon's going to shine tonight? What about the stars? What about the five spheres of the atmosphere? Y'all worry about them? Most of you didn't know there was five. Uh, Do you worry about how much oxygen and how much nitrogen and how much of these other things are in the atmosphere? Are you afraid there might be a little bit too much oxygen one day when you get up and you can't breathe? You don't worry about those things, do you? Why? You can't affect them no how. When are we ever going to get to a spot? To understand and commit those things to God. When are we going to realize much of what we worry about and get depressed about? We can't change it know how. I can't change some of the circumstances in my life or your life anymore that I can control the atmosphere. Yet if Satan can get me and get you down and worried and down and depressed and negative and negative and negative, he affects our victory, he affects our joy, he affects our walk, and he takes away our health right out from under our nose and begins right in here and uses our own thoughts as his powerful ammunition. If anybody catches the devil on his way out, hold him for me because I'm going to sock him right in the mouth. Man, that makes me mad at the devil, don't it you? My, there are people whose lives are surrounded by negativity. They've been plagued with diseases such as cancer and other debilitating illnesses. Now watch how you're made. This is amazing to me. This this that we want to look at now is called chemical signatures. A certain part of your brain 
that puts out different chemicals associated with different emotions. So anger, for example, looks different on a cellular level from happy. And your thoughts can also initiate chemical reactions within your body. My thoughts, my thoughts initiate chemical reactions in my body. No wonder the word said, as a man thinketh, so is he. So my thoughts will move inside of me and initiate releases of certain chemicals in my body that can either benefit me or damage me. I turn in prayer requests after prayer requests. Pray for me for this, pray for me for that. Pray for me the doctors found this and the doctors found that one. In reality, the cause is right up here. I'm not saying you're crazy now. I'm just talking about the thoughts that we all think. What's this? For example, your palms when you're nervous. What's what happened now? Your palms sweat when you're nervous because your thoughts are initiating your adrenaline reserves. That's a chemical response from your body to your thoughts. Lord have mercy. You mean my thoughts being invisible actually respond and react to the chemistry in my body. A chemical response from your body to your thoughts. So what if you continue to think adrenaline producing thoughts over and over again? Would your body become addicted to the adrenaline rush? Yes. Yes. One of the main effects of positive thinking is that you are affecting your chemical system within your body. Now remember, this is not mind over matter. It's not psychoanalysis. It's not many of those types of things. It's a truth. Watch this as I was with Moses. Let him that is weak say, I am strong. See, just say in your heart that I am strong. I have now accepted Jesus as my healer and never have any negative testimony anymore. The year 1951. You said that's outdated. How many of you have it in your life? How many of you are living up to this 1951 quote? Mm. Well, maybe we ought to update to this 1951 quote. Praise the Lord. Notice my commission again, 1951. Now, how many is back there in the prayer line now is going to believe with all your heart that you're going to be made well? Believe with all your heart that you're going to get well. Now, do you commit yourself to the Lord Jesus and say, I now accept you. You, my heavenly Father, is my healer. And by your grace tonight, no matter what happens, when I'm coming to the prayer line, I accept your blessings. Amen. And I believe that when hands are laid upon me, I'll get well. I'll never, I'll never have a negative testimony no more I'm going to believe the Lord. Now listen, friends, you understand the conditions of the world and the conditions of many people around you does not have to be your testimony. We're not going to stop the world. We're not going to make the world our cheery and turn it into a millennium. But it does not have to be your testimony. The world's in a horrible shape. I look at myself, I'm better shaped now spiritually than I've ever been in my life. The Word of God's changing me. Oh, my, it's changing. I'm walking in a spot I've never been with God before. The world's in terrible shape, but that ain't my testimony. A lot of the message folks are in the worst shape they've ever been in their life, but that ain't my testimony, Brother Chuck. But if you're not careful, you'll let yourself 
become so inundated with all the things that are around you that are so negative, the economy, the nation, so on. Sure, it's all terrible, it's all bad. But that don't have to be your testimony. Watch this, I'll never have a negative testimony no more. I'm going to believe the Lord. Will you raise your hands and say, I believe that? And I now confess that. Again, now healing is something that you just say, well, I believe it, I believe it. Now that's all right. If that's the best you can do, just mentally or just say, well, yes, I I see it, I believe it, I accept it. Then if you accept it on those basis, keep saying it over and over and say it out loud. Does God need to hear you say it out loud, Brother Junior? Junior needs to hear Junior say it. Donnie needs to hear Donnie say it. Why so my subconscious can hear me say, this is me. This is what I am. Do you understand what Brother Branham is saying here? Brother Branham is saying here what doctors are calling now, rewiring your brain. Under neuroplasticity. Glory to God. So you just say it over and over. You understand what you're saying over and over? You don't have to say Rima over and over. You're saying Logos. You're saying it over and over and over. And all of a sudden God changes it to Rima. And you're saying over and over. It's done. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But you take the Logos and you just said over and over, I'm a Christian. I'm delivered. I'm, I'm a filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm going on with God. Until eventually you believe it. Now watch. You accept it on those basis. Keep saying it over and over. Saying it out loud. And saying it over and over. Man, that sounds like a bunch of overs. And just keep saying, I'm healed. I'm healed. Say it. Until actually you believe it. So in other words, when you start out saying it, you ain't actually believing it. You're believing it, but you ain't believing it. You understand? You're believing it, but from a mental standpoint only. So why, how do we get it in? Keep saying it over and over. No, wait a minute. Why would you need to say it over and over and over and say it out loud? What difference would that make versus saying it one time and saying it to your heart? You are rewiring your brain. You are changing your bad thought world. This is what doctors call today self-talk. That you reprogram yourself. Well, glory. I'm being reprogrammed so I can be changed. (laughs) Do you understand that they have now found out that by thinking the right things, you can actually change your own cells. Lord have mercy. That your cells actually be take on the image of your thoughts. My brother, sister, if it works that way in the natural, what about the supernatural with the mind of Christ? And I hear rapture preach and I talk rapture, I walk rapture. Will not my cells take on the thoughts of rapture? Praise the Lord. You say it on those bases, keep saying it over and over. Say it out loud. Say it over and over. Just keep saying, I'm healed. I'm healed. Say it until actually you believe it. 
And when you believe it, it's going to take place. Don't have a negative testimony. Every time you confess, well, I still feel bad today. You go straight back in the same rut that you was in the beginning. You mean our words can hinder the power of creation. You believe this as much as you believe the seven seals and the seven thunders and all the rest of these things. So whenever we are prayed for, physical thing in our body, whether it's in our home, whatever it is in our walk with God, and we keep saying it over and over and over again, and then somebody comes up, hey, feel him, Brother Jim. Oh, oh, Lord. Oh, I'm telling you what, I, I just... There's such power in what they say. If you're not careful, you'll be having those symptoms the time you leave. You'll be feeling as down as they are. Well, glory. Now watch this. There's not a man or a woman in here that is baptized with the Holy Spirit. But what would start your confession? I believe I've lost the Holy Spirit. I believe it's gone from me. You'll go right down. You mean to tell me the power of our words? Is so powerful, it could, inf- it could affect the indwelling of the presence of God. Amen. That even though the Holy Ghost was there, even though it was yours, even though he had sealed your soul, but you say, I ain't got it. I don't feel him no more. There's something wrong. I've lost him. Amen. Lord, help us. Watch this. All right, bring the lady. You believe with all your heart. You believe Jesus Christ makes you well right now. Go thanking God, saying, praise you, Lord, praise you. Don't never have no negative testimony. Testify positive. Jesus has healed me, and I'm well. Watch this. Go. And you will receive your healing. She hadn't received it at the platform. Now many people got it right there and lost it. She never got it. But he's telling her the way to get it. Testify positive. Don't testify negative. And if you do what I tell you, you'll walk right into it. Now, he didn't say she got it right there, but he said, notice, keep your neck, don't have a negative testimony, testify positive. Jesus has healed me, and I'm well. Jesus has healed me, I'm not going to be, I'm well. Go, and you will receive your healing. Look at this. You don't look at your affliction. You keep your eyes on the promise giver, the Lord Jesus Christ. Keep your eyes on his word. He's the one who promised. He watches over it to perform it. He keeps it in the hollow of his hand. And in the depths of his heart, it's bedded. His words has to be true. Get your mind off your sickness. How are you going to do that if you're hurting? How are you going to do that if you're in pain? I have no idea how you're going to do it, but it can be done, and he wouldn't have told us to do it. Somehow there is a way that we can look at it. This is not me. Do you understand? This is not me. This sickness is not me. It's only a temporary setback. This situation I'm in, this is not me. That's not what Christ wanted me to be. Get your mind off your sickness, off your troubles. And the church said, keep your eyes on Jesus. Just keep him on your mind. Keep thinking about him. How lovely he is. How sweet he is of his promise. And if you're sick, get this on your mind. 
He was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquity. The chastisement of my peace was upon him. Amen. And with his stripes I was healed. Keep your mind centered like that. Your mind? Not your soul? Keep your mind centered like that. Something will happen. All of a sudden something drawn out of you. An anointing will come on you. And out of that chair you'll go. Oh, hallelujah. Draw nigh to the Lord and he will draw nigh unto you. Now look at some of the facts, medical facts that have been proven that are the effect of negative thoughts. Feeling down, the extent of negative feelings can go from anger, frustration, irritability to even anxiety and depression passing through many other feelings and none of them pleasant. Physical effects, the body lowers its defenses as negativity subtracts from our energy. You ever see anybody depressed that's wound up like an eight-day clock? Most people that's depressed don't feel like an eight-day clock that's wound up. They feel like an eight-day clock that's been run down for about eight months. They have no energy. They have no you know, low esteem. They don't feel like going nowhere. They don't want to see nobody. They sure don't want to go to church. And I don't blame the devil for trying to keep folks away from a real church that's got the truth. He's scared of them going to the house of God. The devil don't mind you going to Walmart. He don't mind you going to Target. But brother, don't go to a church where there's deliverance. Oh my Besides an extreme negative emotional state, it can cause eating disorders. From overeating to a complete lack of appetite and not eating enough and not caring about it. From negative thoughts, becoming so depressed, you don't care if you eat, you don't care if you comb your hair, you don't care if you take a bath, you don't care if you smell like a hog, you don't care. Closing yourself down to possibilities and the flow of abundance. When we're in a negative state, we don't attract those elements that would make our lives advance. Rather, we attract the circumstances that support us in thinking something is wrong and we get stuck. And folks that get down and so negative, you know, and somebody will talk to them and try to be positive. If they're too positive, they won't want them to come back and talk to them no more. Because they don't think they understand. Many times they do understand. They're trying to lift you up. But many times, what will they do? A down person will want to talk to another down person. Why? Because they can fellowship around that negativity. Oh, my. You're going to preach with me? Look at me. Simply put, when we stay our thinking negative, we attract negative emotions and events. Thus, when one is in a negative state, everything seems to go wrong. A negative effect in others. Have you ever wondered how you may be affecting other people because the way you feel? Think about when a relative, a friend, or someone at work seems to be having a bad day and how you feel when you come in contact with them. You could be making others feel the same way when you're wrapped in your own negative thoughts. God forgive us, we've all done it. Now, one of the serious side effects of negative thinking is that it causes physical illness and disease. In fact, Dr. Louise Hay states that ingrained negative thoughts and negative feelings that are not released can even cause cancer. Now, please explain to me the difference. We will preach against people who smoke, We will preach against people who chew tobacco. Oh my, if there's somebody in our church that spit out my voice and say, you say, you hypocrite. That's going to call you counsel. And you'll come in with unforgiveness in your heart and bitterness and hard feelings. What's the difference in you causing cancer by forgiveness and him causing it by Winston or pale male? Both of you shall file in the temple of God. Goodness. 
Listen to this. The average person has over 30,000 thoughts a day. Man, no wonder at the end of the day you wore out. Now notice this. Through an uncontrolled thought life, we create conditions for illness. We make ourselves sick. Research shows that fear. I want you to listen to this. And I read this this week. It made me so mad. I could have bit a donut right in two. That's the way I express my anger, donuts and Snickers. Notice this. Research shows that fear on its own triggers more than 1,400 known physical and chemical responses and activates more than 30 different hormones. The one emotion of fear. You lying devil, you. So every time he tries to make us afraid, Brother Jim, 1,400 responses take place in our body. Don't affect your soul, Brother Dan. It's sealed. As I told you, the devil ain't worried about many of our souls. He doesn't know they're gone in the presence of God. They're sealed, but he still has access to the mind and to the body. Notice this. Fear on its own triggers more than 1,400 known. You wonder how many more unknown that they're yet to find out. 1,400 known physical and chemical responses and activates more than 30 different hormones. There are intellectual and medical reasons to forgive. This is not a preacher. This is a doctor. My. Toxic waste generated by toxic thoughts cause the following illnesses diabetes, cancer, asthma, skin problems, and allergies, to name just a few. Conscientiously controlling your thought life and start to detox your brain. We don't need a bladder cleanse, a liver cleanse, a kidney cleanse. We need a brain cleanse, I believe. (laughs) Medical research increasingly points to the fact that thinking and conscientiously controlling your thought life is one of the best ways, if not the best way, of detoxing your brain. It allows you to get rid of those toxic thoughts and emotions that can consume and control your mind. The average adult has 300 negative thoughts per day. One about every two and a half minutes. According to the Midwest Center for Stress Control. And I've been trying to figure out if there's an herb, some kind of magic bullet, some kind of powder, some kind of green lemonade, or some kind of something for stress. Come to find out, I've been packing it right in my own body. Stress relief. (laughs) Oh, glory. Can I go on? Y'all overwhelmed or can I go on? Now watch this. A phenomenon called the nocebo effect may explain why some people report side effects that are not related to medications they are taking, according to a new report. Most people have heard of the placebo effect. 
in which people on an inactive drug or therapy experience improvement in their symptoms. Researchers compare new drugs to placebo to gauge the true benefit of a therapy. The placebo effect can make people feel better. But sometimes a dummy pill can have the opposite effect. Believing that they are taking an active medication. Some patients develop side effects when taking a placebo. This phenomenon is dubbed nocebo, which means I will harm in Latin. Placebo means I will please in Latin. The nocebo effect may help explain why people taking real medication sometimes experience side effects that do not seem to be caused by the drug. When I read this, it reminded me of folks going to church. That they go to having certain effects which really shouldn't be produced by what they're hearing preached. Kind of made me wonder if they wouldn't have maybe a nocebo effect. I want you to listen to this, friend. It's, it's, It's overwhelming to me. These so-called non-specific side effects can have serious consequences. The researchers note in the February 6th issue of the Journal of American Medical Association, such side effects may cause patients to stop taking medication, or in this situation, quit going to church, or physicians to discontinue effective drugs. In a review of medical studies, Barsky's team identified several factors that seem to be related to the nocebo effect and non-specific side effects of active medications. The power of of positive thinking may account for some of the placebo effect but the negative thinking has a power of its own according to the researchers. Patients who expect distressing side effects before taking a medication are more likely to develop them. The power of suggestion can be influential as well. In one clinical trial, the authors reviewed patients who had been warned of the possibility of gastrointestinal side effects of a medication were much more likely to experience such symptoms than those who had not been told of the possible side effects. So in other words, me and Brother Terry, they're going to try us out for this new medicine. They tell Brother Terry, now look, Mr. Horn, there is a slight possibility. You could have cramping. You could have this and that and the other in your stomach. They don't tell me that. Many of the people they told it to had it. Why? They expected it. No wonder Brother Ben said you get what you expect. Folks go to church expecting to get nothing, and they get nothing. You go to church back to getting something, you're going to get something. Oh, my. Notice this. One study found that more than 90% of people who had been classified as allergic to penicillin were able to take oral penicillin. Uh Uh-oh. So this group of people, that don't don't give me, oh, no, it'll kill me. Oh, no, it'll kill me. But they give it to them in another form, and 90% of them could take it with no harm. Well, glory. The Lord kind of sneaks in some spiritual penicillin the same way. It's possible, according to the authors, that some patients who were fearful of having a bad reaction to penicillin misinterpreted symptoms that were not caused by the drug. In another study, patients taking blue placebo pills were more likely to report drowsiness than patients taking pink ones. Now, don't laugh. Some of y'all might have been in that test. (laughs) Wonder why your natural help, many of the sleep things that you get in Walmart, are blue and yellow. 
Because they know it's the way you look at it. Now, if they have broke into this in the natural realm, is it any wonder that our Father is breaking open since we're up here now? Things that 15 years ago, 20 years ago would have blowed our mind. But now here we are setting things and hearing things preached and we're thinking, Lord, have mercy. It wouldn't do no good to preach this in the days of Luther or in the days of Pentecost or on up. You've got to preach it where it can be comprehended in the mind age. The age of the intellect. <laughs> Notice this. Patients taking blue placebo pills were more likely to report drowsiness than patients taking pink ones. The researchers point out that in one study, patients associated red, orange, and yellow pills with stimulants, blue and green ones with sedatives. <laughs> they just look at them. Oh, I'm so evil. They can't hardly make the bed. There's your sugar pill with blue coat. Lord have mercy, children. If something like that is so powerful, how would we scoff when we say when we hear the word preached, it will actually take us into a body change? If something like a color of a pill can so affect you psychologically in the way you look at it, would not the powerful word of God force our bodies to be changed? Lord of mercy. Now watch this, how amazing. So what can be done? The report suggests physicians and nurses should get training on how to better communicate with patients to avoid instilling negative suggestions. Patients may not need as much information about the bad things that might happen. I think preachers might ought to listen to some of that too. Man, there's a balance in being able to preach all the nonsense out of it. I'm going to be able to give you enough information to be able to help get you out of here. You know, as well as I do, you look at a Newsweek or a Time magazine or whatever more, and they got this advertisement on this medicine on this page. Beautiful sun and green grass and all this, that, and other. Then you turn over on the backside. Could cause rot gut. Could cause foot stink. Could cause bad breath. Could cause, could cause, could cause. You say, I don't even want to take it if it causes all that stuff. Now they're rethinking, saying, you know what? Maybe we've caused this. Wonder if preachers could be part of the cause of so much negativity around the word. I spend all my time telling you how many people's leaving, how many people's getting away. I can balance that up by telling you how many's still faithful. How many still holding on to God? How many's got a greater determination than ever before? Right? Well, friends, I come to church to feed. I don't feed on how many folks is quitting. You understand? I don't feed on how many perverts there are out there. I don't feed on a lot of that stuff. Yes, we have to talk about it, but that's not my diet. Listen to this. I found this to be absolutely overwhelming. Did you know that up to 95% of physical health issues are a direct result of your thought life? Let me find a place to close. We'll begin this seminar again in the morning. Last time I dealt with some messed up, Brother Louis' grandson said, is he a doctor or a preacher? <laughs> Neither one, really. <laughs> Watch this. Whenever you have a thought or emotion, your brain releases neurotransmitters 
Newt, Newt, these medical people probably laugh themselves to death when I pronounce these things. And hormones, which trigger physical responses in your body. If you're caught in a stressful situation, you react to it with negative thoughts or words. Your heart starts racing. Your body releases two powerful stress hormones. Cortisol and adrenaline. Now, do you understand when a zebra gets on the plains of the Serengeti and the lions begin to set the trap? And this zebra is picked out. They start running. That zebra's body releases tremendous amounts of adrenaline. If it's a female, her productive system shuts completely off. Many other major functions of her body go into relaxing mode. And everything, all the adrenaline is focused on getting out away from that line. Now she does escape this attack. In a matter of five minutes or less, she will go right on the plains of the Serengeti, eating grass again. The adrenaline will start being reduced out of her body. And she'll be just as calm as she was before the attack. But not us. Because we live in such a stressful, you know, such a, oh my, such a difficult age. Our bodies are constantly under this cortisol and this, and that adrenaline. My, just constantly, con- oh, oh, I got to hurry, I got to go to this, oh, oh, I got to that, oh, my, my, my. It's tearing us all to pieces. We were not made to live under these things in our body under such amounts. Well, glory. There's not only a man here who can turn on the light, but there's a man here that knows how to turn off the cortisol and the adrenaline and give us peace in the time of trouble. (laughs) Notice this. When these hormones are secreted, In response to continual stress, they have very negative impacts on your body. They accelerate brain aging, increase fat storage, suppress your immune system, and cause muscle and bone loss. And this is coming from within your own body. So now your thoughts and how you're responding to this stress And your body is releasing these natural things that God gave you. But now they're being released so often and to such an excess. You're aging quicker. You're breaking down quicker. And blaming either God or the devil for the whole thing. You realize what all this would have cost you to go to a doctor to hear what you've heard tonight? (laughs) <laughs> it took you 1,937 visits to get all that of a doctor because most of them don't say me. Yeah, 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 see you tomorrow. Come back six months from now. Friend, listen to me. I believe Jesus is concerned about us. Listen to this. They accelerate brain aging, increase fat storage, suppress your immune system, and cause muscle and bone loss. Now we realize we cannot stop these stressors that are constantly fluctuating on this world of the outside. But the release zone is actually from within. Learning how, by the grace of God, to live in a stressful Before long, you're going to understand what's going to make you an overcomer, my sisters. It's not the length of your hair only, not the length of your dress. My brothers, it's not just that you don't have tattoos plastered all over your arm and long hair like a girl. It's going to be being able to live in the most stressed age that ever was on the earth and finding an avenue in God to find a place to let off the pressure. If you get into the habit of thinking positive thoughts and speaking positive words, 
in these circumstances, even if the negative thoughts arise, your production of stress hormones will decrease and you will begin to lose body fat. The perfect diet. I found it. My goodness. <laughs> your production of stress hormones will decrease and you'll begin to lose body fat more quickly. Now, I assure you, people will think that you're taking pills. I think, wonder how many he takes today. It's sad, friends. We not only have the stress of the rest of the world, we have the stress of maturity, the stress of perfection, the stress of laying aside all of our failures, Brother Jim, to come into this image. You understand what that does? To, to, to receive it naturally, it only puts more stress on you. The desire to be a mature son of God can transfer into your mind and become a worry, and then your body releases more of these hormones. Our thoughts and emotions are represented in the body as electrochemical reactions. These chemicals are constantly floating around in our bodies and are stored in different places. The research is clear that negative thoughts and the associated harmful chemicals have detrimental effects on our health. And yet you have the ability to control the degree to which harmful chemicals float around in your body by adjusting your thinking patterns. You say, Brother Donnie, you've disappointed me. I would have never thought you would have preached such things. Positive thoughts. Really? Well, I guess that means Brother Branham disappointed you. Brother Ben said, when you get to thinking about divine healing, get to thinking about Christ, keep him on your mind if there's any praise, if there's any virtue, the Bible said, think on these things. If any thought comes by, well, maybe it couldn't be so, get it off of your mind right quick. Think on the things that's... Never let a negative thought pass through. Don't let it stop anyhow. If it stops, keep your thoughts positive. Let's stand. Watch this and hear you him in Parkersburg. A couple of quotes over, Brother Rob. And discernment. You have a very strange nature. That is a deep thinker. Always crossing bridges before you get to it. It's always a bad thing. Never happens the way you plan it to happen. And by that, it's developed a peptic condition of the stomach. By that, that what? This makeup, this nature, this mindset. That's right, isn't it, sir? Is that right? Raise your hand. What is right? What could be nothing else? God Almighty knows that. You now throw aside every negative thoughts. And we'll go home and eat your supper and praise God and give him praise for it. Now this man's body is going to begin to respond to what? As he stood there under discernment, God has given him a quick brain rewire. Do you know, friends, that they have actually taken DNA in laboratories and proven that by pattern of changing your thoughts, that it actually alters your DNA and passes down to your children an altered DNA from what you were born with. <laughs> you said, that's far out. It is far out, ain't it? That's what my daddy done. He took his thoughts. And altered my DNA. (laughs) 
My, the power of thought. Amen. May read it to you in the morning. Brother Ben, a woman comes up on the platform and he tells her, Sister, go thinking. Think positive thoughts. She stops and says, Even if the devil tells her I'm going to die, he says, No matter what he tells you, you take what God said. <laughs> oh my the power of thought I wonder Happy Valley how many of our sicknesses our diseases our afflictions our troubles our depression our sorrow many of the things that we deal with we have brought them on ourselves. our adrenaline our hormones our reactions to fear our reactions to so many things Satanists took them and turned them right around to use them against us. You understand when the Father made the expanse in the heavens called the firmament. He made this five layers deep, the firmament, in order to give the place an expansion in the earth to make it livable, habitable. And he called it a firmament, a heaven, or we call it an atmosphere. That atmosphere before the fall was totally controlled by the presence of God. So much oxygen, so much nitrogen, so much other things that are there. But once the fall came, Satan got in control of the atmosphere. Then he gains the title, Prince of the Power of the Air. In that he learned barometric pressure. He learned high pressure. He learned low pressure. He learned thermals. He learned currents. Air movement. He learned about warm water moving up. He learned about crossing warm air with cold air in the upper loft atmosphere. And he learned by doing all of that how tornadoes, hurricanes, and so on could be made. He can't create them, but he knows how at certain seasons and certain cycles to run them together. And the offshoot of that is a tornado down through Tornado Alley. Using the natural laws of God that are existent in the atmosphere. When he gained title of the earth and he injected himself into the human race, he began to understand about cortisol, adrenaline, hormones, secretions, neurotransmitters, all these types of things in the human body. He didn't have to create nothing. He didn't have to go out there and come up with some fang dangle fancy something. But he turns our own mechanisms our own hormones, our own things of our body, our chemistry that was given in our body by God turns it right against us. And it destroys us. I wish I had known this when I was 14. But on second thought, it's probably a greater miracle since I'm 56. (laughs) I don't know about you friends by God's grace this old boy is changing the way he thinks I've already started doing it because I've been a little bit ahead of you studying this now for several weeks over a month and a half or so something like that I've already started saying things in a different way I've already started thinking in a different way and you know what I can already tell the difference Brother Bram said, I told my wife, leaning across the footstool, I was so ashamed of myself because of my negative thinking. I wonder if we could survey our thoughts and our words. If you'd write down what you say in a week's time, I wonder how much of it is infiltrated with things that are so negative and so down and so against the word. Praise the Lord. We've got a baptism tonight. If they'll come prepare for that. We might need to make an altar call too. Might need a bunch more that'll want to be baptized. (laughs) You appreciate the truth?
Oh, my. No wonder Isaiah said, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, bringing into captivity every thought. Peter said, Gird up the loins of your mind. Why would he call your mind loins? Loins to the Hebrews were the procreative ability to produce offspring. Why would Peter put the offspring not in the middle of the body, but at the head? Gird up the loins of your mind. You know what it's taken from figuratively? The way they would dress. They wore a long robe. In order to work, in order to run, in order to move about, they would have to take that long robe and they would have a girdle, a piece of a leather, little thing around their middle here. And they would take that long robe and pull the front of it up underneath their belt, as we would call it. That way they could run. They could fight. They could move without any hindrance. And Peter takes that symbolism and says, Gird the loins of your mind. Because in your mind is procreative ability. Gird up the loins of your mind. What if this young man that killed all these people, these poor families that are devastated by these little children being gone, the devil get on somebody and go to putting something in their mind. It's terrible. Absolutely terrible, is it not? It's terrible. Oh, you know the gun people, oh, it's guns, it's guns. I'll tell you what I wish they'd do. I wish they'd focus on the cause of a lot of this. Movies. Violent video games, television, no love in the home. How many people do they see their brains, brains blowed out on movies? How many bank robbers? How many knivings? How many, all these things. Why is it they never focus there? They always want to focus on the gun part. A gun never killed nobody by itself. Neither can your tongue without your thoughts projecting it. Listen, friends. The power of your life and your deaths plays right here. Mm. Let's sing together, Oh, how I love Jesus. While they prepare. Oh, how I love Jesus. Let's sing it now. Oh, how I. Let's sing it with all of our hearts. I'm singing, oh, how I love Jesus. To me, he is so wonderful. Everybody now. Oh, to me, he is so wonderful. Oh, to me, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus, you're so wonderful. Oh, to me, he Let's raise our hands now. Close our eyes. Let's sing it together. Think on Him now. Singing, oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love you, Jesus. Love you, Jesus, because He first loved me. This is uh, Brother Gabriel Riddleball. 
Uh, his dad told me that uh, he's been asking and asking about getting baptized for about a month. And, you know, I was thinking, I saw the pride on his daddy's face. And his, his grandpa was standing over there, and I just see him beaming with pride. And I thought, you know, as proud as his natural father is, I imagine that his heavenly father is just beaming in heaven. He just can't, he can't get it excited enough about another one coming home, another one, another one coming to, to recognize what he's done for him. So we just want to pray for our brother and, and, and enter into this, this pride, this happiness that, that, we, that we have in, in, in baptizing another soldier coming home. Let's just bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we're once again standing in this pool, Lord Jesus. And Lord Jesus, we're so happy, Father, to be here. We're, we're so, so glad, Lord Jesus, that you're still moving on young hearts, Father. That you're still alive in this age, Lord. That you're still, there's still households and homes, Lord Jesus, that, that speak of you and make you welcome, Father God. And, and Lord, that, that, that bring a desire in the young people, Lord Jesus, to, to get baptized, to serve you, to love you, to, to come to the water, to give their lives to you, Father. Lord Jesus, we know, Lord, that this is the greatest protection, Father God, that we could ever grant to our children, Lord. Lord this is the greatest thing that we could ever do, Father God, for our children, Lord. We want to watch over them. We want to protect them, Father God, from all the evils of the day and all the things that happen all around us, Lord. But, Father God, there's no greater protection than in your arms, Father. So, Father, I stand in this water, Lord, and I want to commit... Lord Jesus, my little brother's life, Lord Jesus, he wants to give it over to you for you to protect him, to watch him, Lord. And not only that, Father, but to fill him with the Holy Ghost, his promise, Father. He's repented, Lord Jesus, and he's come to this water to be buried, Lord, to start a new life, Lord Jesus, in you. Father, I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would just grant to him the Holy Ghost as he comes out of the water, Father, according to your promise. We ask it in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Little brother Gabriel, I baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sin. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's sing together, wonderful, wonderful Jesus is to me. Before we go. Can you say he's wonderful to you tonight? Amen. How many wants to supply this word to your life? Amen. Make us different people. We can be exactly what God wants us to be. Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are of a good report, think on these things. Store it up into your account. Lagazamio is the word that Paul uses to add to your account. Think. Think on these things. Why? There's great power. Not only releases to you the natural benefit, but it's going to change your body one day. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's sing it together. Amen. Wonderful, wonderful Jesus is to me. Counselor, Prince of Peace, mighty God is He. He's saving me, keeping me from all sin and shame. Oh, wonderful is my Redeemer. Everybody now. Oh, He's so wonderful, wonderful, Jesus is to me. Counselor, Prince of Peace, mighty God is He. He's saving me, keeping me from all sin and shame. Oh, praise His name. Oh, wonderful, wonderful, Jesus is to me. Counselor, Prince of Peace. God bless you, saints. See you in the morning. Keeping me. Wonderful is my...